Everybody, it's a Poscon, and I am here today to show you how to install mods using the Visitor X's custom character tools. Now, there's a lot of great modding videos circulating the internet, but they tend to overlook some of the base concepts that someone completely new to modding WW2K16 might not already know. So I'm going to run through that installation process in its entirety, explaining every little component, what each file does, what each file is, so on and so forth. And we begin first of all with what trips a lot of people up when they start trying to initially mod WW2K16. There is a bit of a caveat when it comes to using mods. You have to ask yourself a question. Are you willing to trade longer load times in exchange for the ability to use mods? Because when 2K released the first patch for WW2K16, it came with a bin file, which is sort of like a uh, cheat file that has basically all of the frequently used assets in the game bundled into a single file. So your computer, rather than scanning through all the files of the game when the game starts up, it can just load this cheat file. However, what that file did was it broke modding support completely and entirely because file sizes were different, various file names were different or altered, so on and so forth. So before you even think about modding the game, you have to ask yourself, are you willing to go back to those extremely long three minute initial loading times? Or are you willing to live without mods? If you still want to mod your game after that, then here we are. This is where we begin. And the first step is working your way around that bin file. So what you're going to want to do is migrate over to your start menu in Windows. And on Windows 10, of course, it's the little Cortana box down in the bottom here. What you're going to want to do here is type in folder options. And hit enter. And that'll bring up this little dialog box. And in this little dialog box, you want to navigate over to the tab that says View. And you want to make sure the little dot that says Show Hidden Files, Folders, and Drives is checked off. Now once that's checked off, hit OK. And then you want to go to your WWE 2K16 install directory. Once in there, you're going to find that bin file that I was telling you about. It's named chunkcache.bin. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to carefully right click on that file, make a copy of it, and store that backup copy someplace on your computer just in case something goes catastrophically wrong. All right, now that you back that file up, click on it again and you're going to want to hit rename and then just highlight everything hit copy and then go back into your WWE 2K16 install folder where you just were now once inside that folder now that you've made a backup copy of that chunk cache bin file you can right click and delete it all right once you've deleted that file Right click anywhere inside your WWE 2K16 install directory. Bring up this dialog menu here. Click on new and then go down to text document. Go all the way over to the end. Highlight the whole thing. Make sure it looks like this. Then right click and hit paste. And you've just created a dummy file which will enable the game to load as if that bin file were there without any of the restrictions preventing you from installing mods. This is the step that trips up the most people when it comes to installing mods, and that causes people the most problems when they've accidentally stumbled upon a modded character in Community Creations and downloaded it, only to find their save file corrupt. This should alleviate both problems, Though I still would recommend avoiding any and all modded characters in Community Creations. Alright? Now that that is done, we can begin the actual modding process. You're going to want to download the custom character tools by the Visitor X in the link provided in the episode notes. 
Once you've downloaded and installed that program, you're also going to want to go and grab whatever mods you want to install. You can find most of them in the modding category on Smack Talks. I'd recommend watching through any one of my modding videos to see which particular mods you might want to use. For the sake of this video, we're going to go with ALC Legacy's AJ Styles mod because it will enable me to show you not just how to install a mod, but how to install a mod that has multiple attire variants. Okay, so we're gonna pop on the Smack Talks. We're gonna download ALC Legacy's AJ Styles mod now. We're gonna extract him, and as we extract him, you notice there are multiple variations of CH472. Those are all the various attires for AJ Styles. Now you're going to want to highlight them all, copy them, and then migrate over to your WWE 2K16 install folder. Go into the pack folder, the CH folder inside your pack folder, right click, and then paste all those files. What those pack files are, that is the actual in-game character model with all his various texture elements. In the various files there are different attires for AJ Styles, different variants of AJ Styles. But what you notice is that the AJ Styles file contained various CH pack files. But it didn't contain a POFO or a moveset file. Two very important components of every mod. The moveset file is of course the moveset file. Goes without saying. And the POFO file is all of that wrestler's profile information. His name, hometown, all of his attribute statistics, his brand, etc, etc. Those are the two components we will be installing with Visitor X's custom character tools program. So while you're on the Smack Talks website, you're going to want to navigate over to the POFO database created and curated by the Heartbreak Kid. And we're going to download the AJ Styles moveset and POFO. All right, now that we have AJ Styles moveset and POFO, I chose AJ Styles for a reason here. You're probably noticing something a little odd. One says 472 and the other says 460. This is where things can get a little confusing. Your pack file for that wrestler, that CH47202 for AJ Styles, needs to be named that. The POFO also needs to be named 472. However, the number in the name of a moveset file means nothing. It could be numbered anything. So if you ever encounter this in the future when installing a moveset, it doesn't matter. All that matters is the POFO number since the moveset is tied to that POFO. All right. So now that we have everything ready to go, it's time to make the magic happen. First things first, we're going to launch WWE 2K16. For the sake of this video, I'm going to leave the actual game portion full screen so you can easily see what I'm doing from a visual presentation. But for you, you're going to want to put it in windowed mode so you can also open up the Visitor X's custom character tools alongside it and have them both running at once. Alright, now that you have it windowed, make sure you've returned back to the main menu of WWE 2K16. Open up custom character tools by the Visitor X. Click the box next to the POFO field and we're going to navigate to where I have the AJ Styles POFO saved. Now I'm going to repeat that process for the moveset file. Now that we have both fields filled out, it's as simple as hitting the install button. After you hit the install button, you need to return to WWE 2K16. Navigate over to My WWE and click on any of the default in-game characters and change their roster brand or change their heel face status and click OK. That will cause the game to save and now your mod is installed and ready to use.
you see AJ Styles up there in the list. And we're going to load into a match just so you can see that it worked out great. But, 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 the tutorial isn't over there. There are some additional things to bear in mind here. When it comes to these movesets, a lot of them are converted from 2K15, and thus they aren't one-to-one -one translations. Some of the moves from 2K15 have been renamed in 2K16. So if you run into an issue where you're using a modded character in a match, and you go to throw a punch or grapple, and all of a sudden that character just falls flat on his face. What happened was, the move that was assigned in that slot doesn't exist in 2K16 or has been renamed. So, anytime you encounter that, you just want to open up that wrestler's moveset in the creation suite, look through things for any move slot that says none, and just change it to what you think that wrestler should have. And the last final cherry on top is A, how to use those additional attires that came with AJ Styles, and B, how the hell to get the game to actually say AJ Styles' name. I'm guessing some of you may have encountered this issue where you install a mod, and it says something like WrestleMania 1 <laughs> for the guy's name, and you're wondering what the hell is going on. In order to get these modified wrestlers to have the names they should have, and in order to access all of these various additional attires, you need to download the data editor by Cave Wave Rider. Now within that data editor, you are going to be given the option to install a miscellaneous start file along with a future string pack file. The future string is what contains all the additional wrestler names and information for all of the mods you're going to install going forward. So they are all already installed, so you don't have to do any of the hex editing yourself. And that future string file within the data editor is compiled and provided to us by the Heartbroken Kid. And the other portion of that is the Universal Alternate Attire Unlocker by Cave Wave Rider, which enables 10 additional attire slots for up to 100 superstars. When you launch the data editor for 2K16 the first time, it's going to ask you where you have your WWE 2K16 EXE installed. Once again, you're going to have to navigate to your Steam install folder and find your WWE 2K16 folder and find that EXE and click open. Once that's done, you will be greeted with this menu here. The data editor provides a great wealth of things you can do, but a lot of them are higher concept stuff that you can find tutorials by other people on. Right now, we're focusing on just installing those two files so that you have everything ready to go for the basic installation of mods. You see all these tabs up top that say Wrestler Information, Entrance and Moveset Editor, Tag Team and Stable Editor, Tools, Help, Tutorial, Info, Downloads, and Settings. That is what you want to click. Now you see right up top, the first menu is Launch External Mod Tools and Programs. You want to click the Universal Alternate Attire Unlocker. Now you see, when I click it, it brings up this menu since I already have it installed. For you, you might need to hit the Save Data to Miscellaneous Start DLC file first. What you're going to want to do is hit Reinstall Universal Alternate Attire Unlock. And that'll bring up this little window here. The Install uh, Miscellaneous 01 Start should already be checked off because it's required. You are then going to want to click on the dialog box next to install string pack. Once that's done, simply hit install universal attire unlock. Boom, you're done. Now once you do that, everything should work perfectly fine from there on. And I just wanted to touch on one final little tiny thing before we conclude here today. And that is another trade-off of modding. In using that future string file, you're going to find some of the naming conventions within your WWE 2K16 game to be sort of wonky. 
if we load up the unlock screen within WW2K16, you're going to notice that all of a sudden, all of the attires you unlock from going through the showcase mode, all of a sudden, instead of being, you know, WrestleMania 16 attire, WrestleMania 32 attire, SummerSlam attire, all of a sudden, they are now wrestlers' names. All of those naming conventions ultimately get cannibalized in order to add more wrestler names to that string file. So, if you see weird things like that in your game, don't panic. That's how they're supposed to be. That's just one of the slight inconveniences and trade-offs you have to make when using mods. And that's pretty much it for this basic modding tutorial. If you guys have any additional questions, feel free to ask anything. There's no such thing as a stupid question. Feel free to ask anything, and I hope that this has been a help. So, uh, that's me done. Go and enjoy your modded WW2K16. And make sure to subscribe to my channel and watch 2K Modding Weekly. I hope this has been helpful.